Now, if you were to ask me why I got into teaching, why I teach writing, I suppose I have three answers. Uh, the first one is the students. Uh, it's really important to me to meet new people all the time, uh, and the opportunity to help students uh, with their academic careers uh, is, as far as uh, rewarding as it is for some of them, it's uh, maybe twice, maybe 10 times as uh, rewarding for me to watch someone develop from point A to point B over the course of a semester, and when I'm lucky, over the course of a school year. Uh, the second one is is writing itself. I know my way around a sentence. I, uh, I'm a very good reader. I'm a better reader than I am a writer, uh, and so it makes me uniquely suited to uh, help people develop their own stylistic identities, that sort of thing. Uh, and the third reason why I like uh, teaching, especially at the college level, is occasionally I find myself with an afternoon where my children are at the babysitters. Uh, I don't have to be in my office because I don't have any meetings, and so I can sit on my back deck and, from this view, do work like this screencast. So, hello, um, and uh, I, I do the laptop webcam thing uh, because this is an important screencast uh, about week six about your research project. So from time to time, I'm going to put my ugly mug up on the screen uh, in the hopes that you will get Im impressed upon uh, how important certain ideas are about this research project. So uh, what can I tell you about week six? Let's get uh, a little bit of house cleaning out of the way here, or housekeeping. I never, I'm never sure what the phrase is. Uh, I've given you a little more time on your SA3 final draft. Uh, some of you have asked for it, uh, and uh, it seems like it's maybe a busier weekend than, than usual for, for some of you, and I'm happy to give it. So take uh, another two days, more or less, to get your SA3 done. Um, by all means, if you are done, get it posted to the spreadsheet early. I'll have more time to grade earlier uh, in the week than I will later. So if you if you do like my, my feedback, uh, I can promise you more of it if I uh, have more uh, final drafts to look at uh, on Monday. Not so much Tuesday, really. Maybe some on Tuesday, but Monday for sure. Um, <clears throat> Uh, just so anyway, there's a site extension on that. Uh, I'll, I'll do that from time to time if there's need, uh, or if I feel like you need it. Um, but you know, whether or not you feel like you need it is a little, uh, little less material to me than whether I feel like you need it. Um, okay, so here we are, guys. The research project. I usually call it the RP in just about all of my materials. It's the assignment you have to pass in order to pass this class. It's worth like something like 30% of your final grade. So it's uh, almost mathematically impossible to pass the class without passing it, uh, or it's very difficult. So um, I got this right up front, five full pages in length, but let me be clear right off the bat. Oh, I think you need to see me. Any essay that gets turned in, by the time we're done with this, we're going to be working on this essay until November almost, maybe yeah, into November. Uh, and look how nice it is out now, by the way. It's in my back deck. Oh, there's where, it used to be, where my hair used to be. Um, by the time we get to your final draft of this research project, if all you're giving me is five pages even a little bit onto the sixth, uh, your work can only be average. Average means C. You can read between the lines, or I don't even know if you have to read between the lines. I think you can read the lines themselves. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do a lot for this assignment, and five pages worth of writing is not going to be representative of the amount of work I'm going to ask you to put into this assignment. So can you pass it? Sure. Are you going to get much higher than a C? Probably not. I mean, it's not impossible. Uh, I've had some really brilliant writers be very sort of brisk and succinct, but uh, boy, you got to be a special kind of special to do that. So five pages, go ahead and look at the minimum, but uh, my truly excellent essays, my A essays, uh, they will far exceed. In most cases, they will double that. Oh, let me start with this. Uh, will double that number, so just FYI. Okay, uh, another thing that I do want to warn you about, and I'm just going to keep my face off the screen for now, um, is that uh, you're going to have uh, 45 minutes worth of screencasts to watch this week. You're going to have a lot of independent reading to do this week. You're going to have a lot of assignment reading to do, a lot of chapters in the textbook. Uh, that is all on you. That is all independent work. Uh, there's not a whole lot in way of assignments this week. So the temptation to take this week off or to take it easy is probably going to loom pretty large. Do not take that temptation. Do not give in to that temptation. You are responsible for your own learning in uh, ways that maybe you've never been in your life, maybe uh, uh, this week. And if you skimp on those, you're going to have problems in weeks 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm not going to care about those problems. My severe promise to you. I put way too many pictures on my laptop, and now my start disc is full. Um, okay, so 
what do you need to do this week? You need to read the essay five, essay five, the research project assignment. I'm a little less rehearsed because I had this awesome idea to do a screencast from my backyard. Um, I will let you read all this. Uh, I think a lot of it speaks for itself. A couple of the important, most important words, persuasive. If you give me a report, that is to say, if your goal isn't to change my mind in some way as your reader, then uh, yeah, you've not done your, your job at all. And that essay won't pass. It can be the most beautifully written, you know, you could be Dave Eggers, you could be David Foster Wallace, uh, and many other wonderful writers, Zadie Smith, who else am I not thinking of right now, Elizabeth Nussbaum. Uh, but if uh, you can write as beautifully as you want, but if you write a report that's not persuasive, that you don't have the goal of changing my mind in some way, large or small, uh, you're not going to pass this essay. Uh, what else? It needs to have a thesis statement. Uh, I'll have a lot better idea of how, how good or not you are at thesis statements by the time I grade your essay threes, which I obviously haven't and can't do yet. So maybe I'll teach more on that. Maybe I won't have to. Okay, uh, down here, let's talk about the sources real quick. Um, two of your sources, at least two of your sources, have to come from academic databases, academic search complete, and Opposing Viewpoints Resource Center being your two best options because those are the two most appropriate ones that Stark State's digital library provides you. Uh, I've already done a screencast on how to access and navigate those. That was way back uh, when you were beginning week three, uh, uh, essay three. So feel free to go back on that. Uh, if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't, uh, well, that's on you. Go back and watch it. Do your work. Uh, so at least two of your sources need to be academic in nature. Up to two of your sources can be popular in nature, that is to say from credible websites, online newspapers, magazines, and other places. Uh, basically where the writers get paid to write. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really dirty short, shortcut I'm uh, giving you in terms of how to locate is a source uh, credible, is a we website credible. Well, are they being paid for their, their troubles or aren't they? And usually you can tell. So up to two of your sources can do that. And you have to have at least one primary source. It's called a research project for a reason, folks. Uh, one primary source to support your essay. Uh, that can be an interview, an observation, a survey, sort of a social experiment if you want. Um, you have to conduct the research yourself. That is to say, you will conduct the interview. You know, you'll pull the appropriate quotes from it and use them in your paper. You'll conduct the observation. You will take notes and then use those notes in the course of writing your paper. Or um, you can find, or, uh, or you can do a survey, I'm sorry, or you can find one online. You can find the results of a survey. You can use an interview someone else conducted. Um, I'll have more to say on that uh, once you're really getting entrenched in the research process. Um, and so, yeah, those are the big parts of the assignment that I need you to get into uh, and be very familiar with. Okay, you don't necessarily have to check out the sample research project yet, and I'm not even going to click on them because you're pretty, we're pretty early on in that. Same with um, your citation style. Uh, I'm going to guess that just like 90% of most college freshmen, you're not uh, majoring in the humanities like an English major. So MLA is not going to be for you. You have to use your, you know, if you were a regular Stark State student, you would be asked to use the uh, style of your major since you don't really have a major per se. Uh, I, the, the list here will give you a list of, uh, you, know, in, you know, maybe your intended majors on there and you can use it. My strongest piece of advice is going to be stick with APA because uh, very good chance that's the one you're going to use uh, as a college student. All right, uh, I've already recorded two screencasts. Oh, this air is getting to me. Let me take a drink. Okay, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> you didn't, you break it until I was gone. Uh, I've done, um, uh, these are each 15 minutes a piece. It's an overview of the project. It goes much more in depth than I have. And then uh, this one's on getting started, uh, choosing a topic and you know, uh, beginning to see what's going on with your research. So what I will click on here is this spreadsheet. Okay, so uh, some of the stuff will make sense once you watch these two. Uh, you, you need to watch these two screencasts in order for this to make total sense, but I'm going to ask you to look around the internet, get, on, get online, uh, see what's going on in the news. I like topics that come from the news. Oh, maybe this is another look at me moment. I like topics that are in the news. I like you all adding fresh thinking to a topic that not everyone has had their minds made up on yet, and when you pick gun control, when you pick, you know, welfare, euthanasia, the death penalty, uh, what am I forgetting, legalization, I guess legalization of marijuana is a little different just because it's on a ballot here in another month, um, but uh, those tried and true topics where everyone's got their minds made up, everybody's, you know, dug, dug in uh, on their positions, and 
nobody's really going to be changing their minds anytime soon. Uh, those, they don't make for compelling writing. So I like topics that are sort of in the now. They're, you know, capturing the zeitgeist in some way. Uh, it makes the writing richer. It makes it more relevant and it makes it more vital. It actually gives your writing uh, a vital, vitality, life. It has the chance to be real and to matter. And like it or not, that sort of thing is important to me. You didn't choose me. I didn't choose you, <laughs> but we'll, we'll make it work. Uh, okay, so uh, I've already started this list because I'm going to constantly add to this list as well. So I hope you make this part of your routine and check in terms of uh, you know, just checking this spreadsheet often. And I hope you will all add many, many articles to it. So I'll let you read these. These are just the ones that I found. I already made a screencast that kind of uh, the first like five or six. Uh, I did those as a screencast. I recorded myself finding them and adding them. Um, so you'll have a pretty decent idea of what I'm uh, what I'm looking for there. So make a habit of checking that spreadsheet. Uh, I'm going to probably be adding to it all the time because I do, for better or for worse, a lot of my reading online. And when I find something that I think would make for a good topic, I'm going to put it in there. You don't even have to ask me about it. Is it a good topic? Um, you'll know because I've already provided, not that you have to pick from that, you know, from any article I share, um, but maybe you'll do the same thing. You'll come across an article that, uh, you know, that maybe I haven't or I, that I wouldn't, and you'll be able to share it with others. And you might uh, give someone a springboard to a, a good topic, a quality topic. Okay, uh, two, two chapters in the textbook. I don't teach from the, check, the textbook, uh, Composition of Everyday Life, very much because I feel like your quote-unquote tuition dollars are better spent uh, by me assigning from the textbook, but not necessarily, you know, having you get it out and tell me what your favorite part was. That seems fairly oh, I don't know, pedestrian, let's say, and uh, I think we're capable of a little better. That said, these two chapters are important because they are going to give you a skill set in terms of how to make and respond to arguments because hopefully in the course of your, your independent research, you're going to be finding lots of arguments that you're going to have reactions to. Well, these will give you the basis of, of you know, response and also generating the arguments themselves that other people may respond to. So read them carefully. Uh, I don't test you on them. There's no quizzes on readings, but uh, it's very clear to me when you don't do these, when you don't do the reading. All right. Um, look at the annotated bibliography assignment. It's not due yet. I will probably do a screencast about this assignment at some um, point in the future. So I'm not even going to get into it now because I'm probably going to change the assignment. Um, just give it a give it a read. So it's not even due till October 20th. You know, I might, I might get rid of this one. I might, I might give myself another week to work on it. You have um, digital library research basics lessons. Uh, those get, uh, you have to basically go through the beats of uh, this one folder in Angel. So it's in course resources. You go through it. You take a quiz on it. Um, the digital library grades the quiz, and I get your grades that way. So uh, and that that grade come, you know, it's a part of your final grade. So um, what else? Uh, the Prezi uh, that I made for the research project is available here um, and uh, research questions this should be the very last thing you do this week um, and it's really like the one kind of graded activity that you have I want you to um, come up with some research questions and let us know the prompt kind of speaks for itself like many of the uh, discussion posts do so hopefully you'll you'll do it well I'll peek in if I see something troubling like I did with essay 3 I will be sure to let you know well ahead of time um, so what else can I tell you one more time from my deck, um, from my back deck, I'm getting hot sitting in the sun, but I, if I did it in the shade, you couldn't see me. Uh, what can I tell you? This assignment is important. Uh, I get so many students who email me months, semesters, sometimes even years later uh, after this assignment, this research essay project, uh, to tell me that, you know, this, uh, this is the assignment that made me not afraid of writing in college or that made me confident when I got that one big assignment that everybody else was freaking out about. Uh, I like to introduce you to Skills in this assignment that you can take with you for forever, depending on your career, but at least through your academic career, uh, through college. Uh, I've tried to make this as utilitarian as possible, as useful as I can. I certainly get a lot of positive feedback from it. Um, so go into this with some energy. Uh, I want you to have some fun with this, too. We don't all have to pick the saddest topic in the world, the most serious topic. You can have a lot of fun um, writing papers about whatever's interesting to you. We can find something interesting to you. Um, as long as it's maybe not sports. Sports don't make for great research topics typically. You can still talk me into them, but uh, anything that's non even though I love sports, uh, they don't make for great academic topics, and they don't teach you as much as just about any other sort of topic can. So uh, lots of screencasts this week. Good luck making it through.